Hello, I'm Robin and welcome to Molten Music Technology. Today I'm building the Dreadbox Dysmetria. Dysmetria. What is it? It's, it's an analog groove synthesizer for percussive and bass lines, for melody and noise. It's got a couple of oscillators in there. It's got a sequencer which can pump through all sorts of grooves and rhythms. And it comes in this complete kit. It's only available as a kit. None of this pre-built synthesizer like for us. Oh no. So what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to build the thing. I'm going to build through it, going through the construction manual that's available on the Dreadbox website to hopefully show you how even an idiot like myself could probably put it together without too much trouble. It's a bigger build than the other one, the Dysphonia. I also did a video on that. It looks more complex, more components, more stuff going on, but that just gives us more meat to play with, more stuff to get our fingers and our solder and stuff into. And that's good because challenging ourselves is, is all part of life. I mean, Dreadbox say that if you're an inexperienced builder, then this is ideal for you. I'd say, core, cool, blimey. <laughs> all right then, give it a go give it a go. Now sadly Dreadbox only released these in quite limited numbers which is a shame but I hope hope that the enthusiasm for products like this means that they will release more of them. More and more is what we need. Everyone should be building these synthesizers because these are superb. They can sit on your desktop or it can go in your Eurorack. It's the ideal launch pad from a desktop synth into more of a modular vibe. That's very exciting. So I am really looking forward to building this thing this morning. Hopefully it's just this morning. It might end up being days. I don't know. We haven't started yet. So how this is going to work is that we'll just go through the, the bits in the box, see what there is, follow the instructions. I will time lapse most of the soldering because it just takes it takes time, man. You know, it, it just takes time. But hopefully I'll be able to point out any of the snags along the way, you know, the tricky bits and the bits that trip me up that might trip you up and hopefully help you not to trip yourself up. That's the plan. And at the end, we should have a gloriously working analog groove box. I mean, how exciting is that? It already looks fabulous with this front panel. But let's bring you in and have a look and see what's in the box. Here's the box. Here's the box. There's our front panel. That's all good. So I've got a bag here that's got, oh, I like the way these are separated out. That's quite nice. So you've got resistors here, other bits, other bits. Good. You know, any help that a kit supplier can give you is going to be appreciated. This looks like the hardware bag. You've got all your patch sockets, your pots, your sliders, switches and bits and pieces. That's going to be more towards the end of the build I should think. Here you've got IC holders and the ICs themselves, a bit of a header, bits and pieces. Oh there's a rogue capacitor in there. It's interesting. This, I don't know, was it a pair of socks? Dreadbox sweatband. I think it goes on your wrist to mop your fevered brow when you're soldering. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, something like that. Glorious. Well, that's lovely. Thank you. <laughs> oh, look, a little board. This is a USB to modular power adapter thingy. And then we've got two PCBs. Okay. So we've got one which has all of the, uh, the hardware on the front. So this will be the front one. And then we've got this other one that's going to sit behind with a lot more of the components on. A little bit of surface mount already on there. So we're not having to worry about that. There's some sneaky stuff already there. All our soldering is gonna be with through hole components. Great, and you'll find the build manual online, of course. So the manual welcomes you to the kit, which is always nice, but it suggests you work on a nice big desk. B uh, big desk. Yeah, yeah that's, that's not really gonna happen. But never mind, and also work with an open window while you solder. Now, I use this fan here. It's a desktop fan, which blows air through. I mean, the shed that I'm working in is full of holes, so, that, so ventilation's not really a problem. But this blows the poisonous smoke away from my face and off, off somewhere else. So that's what I tend to use. It also then goes into the tools you're going to need. Soldering iron, screwdriver, uh, solder, for instance, a multimeter, which I do have. 
Now this is largely going to be for testing the resistors, but also some other test points. I don't, I wouldn't say it's absolutely essential, but these are not expensive, so it might be worth you picking one up. But for the resistors point of view, you can just go on the, the bands of color that are around them rather than actually having to individually measure each one. But it's a useful thing to have, don't get me wrong. You'll also need some wire cutters, a screwdriver of some kind, and then a USB adapter 1A or more, and a USB type A to type B cable. That's a bit quizzical. I guess they just mean a USB cable, yeah, for powering. That's probably what they mean. We'll find out. Next, they take us through the bags of stuff, which is very helpful. So we've got a voicing PCB, which is which is this one, and a control PCB, which is the one they're calling the one that has all the knobs and bits and pieces on. Good to see. Then we have this nice long list of things which are in the actual bags. So bag one, whoops, <laughs> they've got bag three, bag one, bag two. So bag one is this one, it's the plastic, plastic one that's got all the resistors and bits and pieces in. So this is probably what we're going to be dealing with first in terms of those resistors, I imagine. Bag two is this one, the one with all the chips in it. Bag three is the hardware one. That fella. Good to know. So in terms of the bill of materials, it's a really useful thing to have in a kit manual because you can open these all up, set them up into little pots, count them all, make sure that you have the right number of things to the right number on the bill of materials. Very, very useful. I'm gonna completely ignore that and just gonna crack straight on and assume I've got all the right bits. But I would recommend taking a little bit of time, counting everything out just to confirm that everything in the kit is exactly as it should be. It's a good thing to do. It's very much a good practice that I'm gonna completely ignore. However, if I run into any discrepancies, then I can come back to the bill of materials just to check. And it's also gonna help me in identifying resistors because it lists all of the resistors here and how many that there are. And that's a really easy way of working out which resistors are which, rather than having to necessarily measure everyone, although that's also a good practice to do that. But I know that if I've got 13 resistors, it's gonna be the 220. I know if I've got 29, they're gonna be the 10Ks. That kind of thing. That, the list, the bill of materials is a really, really useful guide to navigating your way around a kit. So to start off, let's put our PCBs aside, and we're gonna be looking at Bag 1.4, I think they're going to be this way up, one, two, three, four. So they're suggesting that we take the resistors out. That sounds like a really good idea. So that's going to be first, the resistors. I mean, generally speaking, you solder stuff oh, from the lowest to the highest in terms of height above the board. Because, you know, as you, as you put in components and then turn it over to solder it, if you're putting in high stuff first, then the lower stuff you put in later will probably fall out while you're trying to do that. So it's it's just easier to start with the lower stuff. The lower stuff is nearly always resistors. So we have this marvelous roll of resistors. Let's see what we have. So that is a good chunk. That's a good chunk of soldering right there. Absolutely, look at all that stuff. Now what it suggests is that you measure them and then write down on the tape exactly what they are. As I say, you can use a bill of materials to give you a big clue on this, but I'll do a little bit of measuring as well, just to kind of go through the process. So you get your multimeter, you set it to ohms. Stick that somewhere where you can see the result. And literally all you do is take your resistor and put it between the jaws of the crocodile clips. Okay, so my multimeter says 0.27 mega ohms. So if I go back up to my bill of materials and just check that I have something that's labeled as 0.27 mega ohms, and uh, no, I don't. So what this is actually referring to is 270K, which is fine. I look on my bill of materials and there we go, two, 270, I've got two, so I can write on here. 270k. Good. Now I have another two here. Now these ones should be 2k7. Let's 
Let's have a look. Clamp those on there. The scope says 2.7. There we go. So in electronics parlance, we use we don't use decim decimal points. Don't like decimal points. For some reason they might get lost or misinterpreted or something. So rather than calling it a 2.7K resistor, we call it a 2K7. Because that's just the groovy way of talking about it. So on our bit of materials, it says there are two 2K7s. That's what these are. Let's go for that. Now, of course, you can rather than measure them read the colored bands read the colored bands that are on here if you google resistor color chart or something like that you'll find an image a guide a calculator that will tell you exactly what those rings are and you can identify them that way i can never remember <laughs> what they are i'd love to think i can hold that information in my head i cannot so i'd have to look it up every time so measuring them or looking it up i mean what's faster what's better for you who knows the faster thing again is to look at the numbers on the bit of materials and just match that to the resistors that you have. But I'll do a couple more of these just to confirm that we have the right thing. For instance, I've got a five here. Now these should be 30K because there are five of them. So let's just check that. No, see, not anywhere near. <laughs> you see, that's why you need to check them because I actually didn't notice the other five which are sitting here which are another one. So these are for 0.47 mega ohms, which we know is 470K. That's what these five are. See, this is why you, you take your time over it. You take your time, 470K. You're rushing through, trying to do shortcuts like I'm suggesting is always going to trip you up every time. So <laughs> I'll measure these other five here. And those are the 30Ks that I thought the other ones are. So those are 30, let's label those. So I've got a four here. These should be 1K. There we go. I mean, close enough, yeah? So I've got a, a stack of eight here, and these are 18. In my bit of materials, there should be seven. We've actually got eight, but that's no bad thing. That often happens, is that you get a couple of extras, and six, that's 11. Again, I don't have any 11, so this is probably going to be a 10 of some sort. It says 50. 50k mm, that's interesting so on my bit of materials i've got a 49k9 so 49.9 .9, which is 50k more or less so i guess that's what this is telling us so this is the 49k9 and i have again one extra that's 100k yeah this big long load here this should be 22k yes 22k yeah 0.2k so that makes it 220 yeah you with me because it's a nice big roll of more or less 29 10k yes there we go okay interestingly dreadbox suggests a soldering iron temperature I'm just gonna turn mine on over here now i've got a posh soldering iron it's great it costs about i don't know 80 100 quid something like that it's really really nice i'm very very pleased that i got it it saves me a lot of time but you don't need to have one. You can have a crappy old soldier iron. It really doesn't matter. It just might take a little bit longer. That's all. But Dreadbox suggest that you should set it at 310 to 320 degrees, which is interesting. I mean, there's lots of debate over what sort of temperature you should have your soldier iron. I found that 380 really works for me in lots and lots and lots and lots of different kits that I've done. So I'm going to keep it at 380 for mine. But, you know... You follow Dreadbox's instructions. If your soldering iron is slightly cooler, then it will just take that little bit longer. That's all. But we're, this is not a speed exercise by any means. It says we need to get on with it. We'll find and solder the 1K resistors. And then the 2K7s. Now, you might not necessarily want to do this in in single steps. You might want to put a load in at once, but that's entirely up to you. So let's get the right PCB. So we're starting with the control board, so it seems, which is this one. And I'm going to start to need my magnifying glasses. Now, people ask where I got these from and can I recommend them? It's like, no, I found them down the back of my dad's shed, or rather he did. And I've no idea where they came from. They look like they came from the 1960s. Who knows? But, you know, again, if you, if you Google magnifiers or whatever these are called lupes 
then uh, I'm sure you can find something something interesting. I'll also be using uh, safety specs when I get to the actual soldering. In fact, I'm just going to put them on right now because solder in the eye is not a good look, not not for anyone. So the the fact that the the manual here has uh, photos of exactly where they go is flipping awesome. Doesn't always happen. But let's have a look to see what's on the on the board. What does that tell us? Okay, so on the board, what you've got is all of the values are labelled here. So you have a choice. You can do it all individually, or you can just put the whole lot in and solder them. So sorry about the, the aircraft buzzing overhead. Unfortunately, I can't do anything about that. I'm just going to have to crack on. So I think a methodical approach is probably best. Uh, the manual doesn't do one board then the other. It sort of does them both concurrently, which is also interesting. But they've both got a whole load of resistors on. So whatever. So let's get these first four in and we'll solder them together. And then I'll just do a time lapse and uh, I'll see you at the other end. So we need the 1K resistors. That's these four. So let's pull the ends off. So I find that I can bend kind of four or five together at once. So if I hold them on the body like that, I can bend like that without any bother. Then I can just turn them to sort of 90 degrees so they end up like that. And I can bend them again. And that usually, that usually works enough for me, I find. But let's see whether it fits in the board nicely or not. So the 41K, there's one there. See if anything, I've just made them slightly wide. So I've had to pull them through a little bit. And then I just do that to the legs underneath so that they stay in. Second one in, there. Put it through, bend it out a little bit. The other ones are over here. I'm using the photograph in the manual as a guide. And here. And that's all four 1K resistors. That's it. That's all you're getting. So let's do these. So here's my solder. I'm using leaded solder because I find that it just works better. Again, that's why I use my little fan to blow the chemicals away. You can, of course, use unleaded solder. That's completely fine. Do that. It just takes that little bit longer to melt, I would say. But this stuff, it is, I can tell you, 0.7 millimeter. Um... Uh, I don't know. Again, just Google it or Amazon it, and you'll find you'll find that sort of stuff. So I use this wire wool to clean the end of my soldering iron. Also use a little bit of um, wet sponge. A combination of those two things seems to work. There's probably a reason for each. I can't quite remember. Anyway, so what you want is your soldering iron to heat up both the ring and the leg. Now you find the very tip of the soldering iron isn't always necessarily the hottest place. But you have to get it in there wherever you can where you're making the best connection with everything. Then present your solder to it and with a bit of luck it will just melt gloriously. It may not, in which case you might need to just angle it slightly differently or perhaps even make contact with the soldering iron. But you just stuff some in there, leave the soldering iron on for a split second and then remove. So you stick it on, heat it up for a moment, present the solder. It will start to flow on and remove. Now I'm putting on probably just a little bit too much. But that's okay. That's a better one. Again, do that. Apply it. Now I'm getting solder onto the end of my soldering iron. But that's not a problem to me. But you'll soon get the hang of it. It's not, it's not difficult. And it's quite fascinating because you'll see the solder melt and then it will move it travels around the stuff that you've heated up it's quite remarkable and then you use your clippers and you cut the legs off i used to just sort of twang them so they go everywhere but then they end up sort of in my feet and, and stuff so i tend to be a little bit more cautious these days and hang on to them as i as i clip them off you can clip them pretty much as low as you like as long as you're not actually cutting through the solder joint so there we go. 
that is a whole bunch of soldering. So what I'm going to do, I think, I'm just going to follow these along and put on every type of resistor um, along here and here and solder that in and then I'm going to look at doing the other board. That's going to be my plan. Now the Dreadbox manual takes you through individual values by values and that's also a completely valid way of doing it. Whichever way you want to do it, I will see you on the other end. Just going to pause there briefly because that is all the resistors on that control panel. A beautiful line of many colours. And so now we're going to move on to this board here, which has another scattering of all sorts of stuff all the way across. I mean, as I say, you can do it in batches, you can do the whole lot at once. I mean, having a lot of resistors together that you're soldering, sometimes the legs can get in the way of what you're doing and that can be detrimental to the flow of your solder. So perhaps doing them in, you know, do some which are spread apart and then do the next lot and then cut off the legs and then do the next lot. Yeah, there's wisdom in that, certainly. But I think I'm going to continue putting, placing resistors in here by value. So I find a particular value, like starting off by 220 and then putting all the 220s in. And then the next value and then soldering the whole lot at once because I'm just that kind of crazy person. But certainly for this board, because it's more crowded, there's a lot more resistors on here, then it would make sense to do this bank, this bank, this bank, or simply follow the instructions provided by Dreadbox because they know what they're doing.
So that, 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 it's all those resistors done. That's pretty cool. I do have a whole load, well not a whole load, I've got you know, ones left over. But that should be okay, provided that you've filled all of the required resistor spaces on the boards, then you don't have to worry about them. But well, you know, keep them to one side. You never know, you might find a hole that you haven't filled. So now, step two, we are onto the diodes, which is in this plastic bag here. 1.2, so it's this load here. These are diodes, these ones here. Also, there tends to be some thicker ones, which tend to be for the power regulator. You've also got those things, power-related things. You've got some trimmers, probably a crystal or clock of some kind. There's another diode, some transistors that kind of stuff diodes have a polarity and need to be respected yes we'll look at that in a minute so the single diode that's not in a tape so this one here is the 1n4148 sold it to the control board as shown so the control board it's not this one it's this one maybe we'll step through this one together shall we over here 1n4148 over here now you'll see the line on the board, yeah? That needs to go with the black line on these particular diodes. Because diodes only flow in one way, so that black line shows you the way it doesn't flow. It can't go in there, it's like a shut door. So stuff will flow that way. All that's important is that you get that line and that line the same way around. That's what you want, yeah?
like so. Whoops. I think I'm going to put these all in before I solder them, just for a bit, make things a bit quicker. So now locate and solder the 3V6 Xena diodes. These are marked with a 3 on their tape. Three, these ones then, what are they marked with? Anything? Nothing. Alright, so we're going to go with the ones that are marked three. And there should be one, two, three, four of these, and they go onto the other board. So switch to this board. This way up, 3v6. So I've got two there, 3v6, one there, one there. So four in total. Now, because these are a little bit small, you can bend the legs slightly away from the body potentially but you know whatever whatever works just make sure you get them the heck the right way around so 3v6 needs to be that way around this one is going the same direction this one is going the opposite direction so the black line is going up to the top and this one is here black line to the bottom and then there's the 5V1 Xena diodes. These are the unmarked tape of four pieces. So these are on this board again. This time we've got one there, one there, one there, one there. Black line going up. Black line down over here. Black line down. Next it's the big chunky ones which are these two here. These are the 1N4007. They are power protection diodes, which will go over by the power section of the board, which is over here somewhere. Again, these don't have black lines. These have gray lines, but you can see that it's the line, and the line needs to go with the line, the line on here. So that needs to go that way around. Now, these have got nice, thick, legs which makes them more difficult to solder in this one needs to go this way around so they go in opposite directions like so and i think we should put all of those in so you should be good at this now you've done all those resistors <laughs> but it's the same deal it can be really really smooth sometimes and other times for some reason it just doesn't want to go in the hole and the best thing you can do is just slightly change the angle of the iron pause for a moment and then it should go in and then you wonder why it doesn't do it every time exactly the same so for these fat ones over here might just need to leave the iron on that a little bit longer So just a time check, that's about an hour's worth of soldering, I think, so far. Now we've got the crystal, which is, which has vanished. So this goes in uh, on this board here at the top. Got a nice circle a bit for it. Matches perfectly. Just drops in there. I don't think it's polarised in any way. It just drops in. And you can solder that in. At the same time, you can do these fellas here, which are the 5 volt regulators. You've got one which goes in here, and another one down the bottom. Now, all you do is sort of put them in and bend them up. That's all. And they sort of pull their own legs out a little bit. You turn that all over, you should be able to, to solder that all together. So, a 100k trimmer. So, we have a bunch of trimmers here. We seem to have those have got 1k written on them. There's an 100k. And the other ones, 1K, 1K and 1K. So you can't go far wrong there. So it's the 100K one. 
and that goes on this board as shown down the bottom and it does have an orientation but should only really go in one way around now I get the impression we're going to be sticking in a few of these yeah so the 1k trim is going all the other bits so that's these ones here so we can do all those together and if you've got any concerns about which way around they go just look at the photograph and good we'll solder those in It says you should have the following parts left over. A couple of those and one of those. Indeed, we do. So you've got two times two N three nine O fours and a TL four three one. Do you have any idea what they do? No, it doesn't matter. Apparently, these are left over. Put them to the side. We'll solder them later. Okay, cool. Step three: IC sockets, headers, and the power board. Bag two. Right. So that's all this stuff here. Move all the IC sockets, put the rest bits back in the bag. So you need to be careful about socket orientation, the way round that they go. Make sure the sockets are placed firmly on the board. Solder one pin, flip the board to check they're okay and solder them down. Yeah, that's, that's the general idea. So on the control board, just got one of the eight pin ones or two fours. And you see the little nick on here, that needs to match the little chunk that's taken out of the front of the IC holder that's so you get your chip around the right way so it follows that convention that goes in there now you can probably just turn it over oh look, I left some left something unsoldered there that's odd <laughs> why didn't I do that I don't know but I've got the opportunity to do it now so you can probably just put it down without it falling out no you probably can't oh I don't know so you can either tape it up, put it like that. I mean, I find you can probably bend a couple of corner legs, corner leg there, and a corner leg there, and it will probably stay as you turn it over. And then the weight of the board and your finger pushing down should make it nice and straight. Lots of different ways of looking at that. I tend to find whatever just is working here and now. So there's a quick diode I've got to stick in. So with the the IC holder, try to get it feeling flat. And then do one corner and hold it flat with your fingers as you remove the soldering iron. And then just turn it over and check. Is that more or less flat? Yeah, of course it is. So then do the rest. <laughs> sometimes it's just one that's not going to go whatever you're doing it's just not quite getting the heat to where it needs to be I think that did it it's a bit blobby but it'll do so that's that one the rest must go on the other board now if you can do them all at once that's always a the better idea rather than trying to do them individually so let's stick all these in again make sure the orientation is right okay so for these ones here there's no nick on the on the print like there is here so instead I think that circle is referring to pin one which is also the side where the nick is generally speaking so I'm going to put that one in and I'm going to squish those pins again like I did before this one in same way around there. now again I can squash the legs a little bit to hold them in but I'm just going to use a piece of plastic like this just to hold them in as I turn it over so they don't fall out 
smartly remove that. And what I should have is them all nicely flat because they've been pushed up from underneath. And that should be completely good. But again, I'm going to solder a leg and check. So it's just a corner on each. So I'm going to turn it up, make sure they look flat, and they do more or less. So then, do the rest. Okay, there's some more parts, 1.5, which I think is this section over here. We've got a few headers, USB port, power socket, another IC holder, or two. So it says for this step we're just going to need the switch, the USB, this weird looking thing, <laughs> that and that, so the headers and the power header can go to one side for the minute. Uh, so let's just whack them in. So some of these go onto the, the power board, which we haven't looked at yet. And the other ones, big long one and a thin one here. So let's do that first, shall we? Let's make sure we go the right way around. There's the pin one. So I'm gonna make that nick there, our pin one. Drop that in. Doesn't want to go. There we go. And this one here. This way around. A slightly bent pin there. Goes in there. Anything else? These three bits. I've got a switch here. Oh, the switch goes all the way over here. Interesting. Yeah, go away with it. Go away with it. I'm going to put this switch in first. I'm going to hold it flat so it flattens out. Heat that pad up. That's good. I'll do this other side. Good. Meanwhile, over here on our IC holders, we're going to do a corner. And another reason why you only do a quarter, so I'm holding it down and then pulling this out, you only do a little leg, is so that if it is wrong, it's very easy to desolder. Holding the whole thing down, trying to make sure that it's relatively flat. If you put in a couple, it will make it much, much harder to pull out if you get it wrong. So those are in. Yeah, and that looks pretty straight to me. That was in alright, so I'm going to do the rest. <laughs> Lovely. Right, the power board. This little thing here needs a couple of bits. This is what takes USB power and turns it into Eurac power so you can power it. Of course, you won't necessarily need this if you're going to plug it straight into your Eurorack. But we're going to be using it as a desktop thing to start with, so let's just go with it. So this big fat thing squeezes in there. Needs a lot of solder. 
this header goes into this thing here. I don't think it needs to be, I don't think there's any indication of which way around it should go or that it needs to go a particular way around. But obviously if I turn that over, that is going to fall out. So that's a factor. And anything else to put in? No, that's my lot at the moment. So what am I going to do about that? Again, I could tape it in or I could do this first, but then it's probably just going to going to be make it quite difficult to do that. So I'm going to take a screwdriver. No, I'm not. Well, yes, I am. I am I am. Am I going to push over one of those legs because these are slightly thicker than the other ones? It might be a lot easier to use a piece of tape. But there we go. I've gone for it. Let's go in there. Let's get one of these in. So I've got nothing holding it up on the other side. So you really do need tape or blue tack or something. But that's flat enough. That's flat enough. Right, let's just get the rest of it in. That's all good. Capacitors and remaining components. Bag 1.3. That's all this stuff here. So I think I'll have a go at doing that and then take a bit of a break for lunch. Let's spread these out into different things. Now these are all going to look relatively suspiciously similar. But what you'll find written on them in ridiculously small writing is... Uh, a number which refers to the value. So this is 104, which is 100 nanometer. So I want to make a pile of those. Right, so I've got a big pile of 104s. Electrolytics, I'll worry about those in a minute. Those um, ones, I can't remember what they are. I'll worry about those in a minute. Let's put, let's put these out of the way. Which one is this? 474, that's to do with that. Two, two ones. 20s, 104s. Right, I'm going to go back up to the bit of materials just to check how many of each I have. So there should be, well, looks like, okay, so there's six of those, so they must be the 220ps and they're called 221s. The 22ps, of which there should be three, are called the 220s. This is going to get complex. What are they called on the board? Okay, so these are they're on the board by their value, which means we might have to write this down. <laughs> so I've got a bit of paper somewhere, anyone? So on a bit of paper, I'm gonna just write what these are so we get these right. That's useful information. I'm gonna keep that to hand as I try to work out where all of these fellas go. Okay, so in the instructions it says find all the 22p which are indicated as 220. So they've given us a lot of good information in the instructions, which is great. So it's it's not going to be that hard to get, not going to be able to get lost too too easily. So there should be three 22ps. Let's try to get this right, shall we? So 22p, 22 and 22 up there. All right, so let's do those three first. That's the 220 really easy to get this muddled up 22p doesn't matter which way round they go they just go in 22p and then just fold the legs out 22p good then the 470s which is the 474s 474s which are these ones here got another three 470s Four seventy N. Yeah, four seventy N, four seventy N, three of those. Good. That looks like the picture. So good, good way to know what you're doing. And then place all the hundred N, which is the hundred and four. So hundred N, which is the one oh fours, which was my big pile of twenty three. So Oh, 
what's next after that? The 220s, known as 221s, which is this lot. 220s. Then the one ends at the 102s, which is these, as I say, these flappy, disky ones. 102s that are one ends. Looking for one end. One N, and then the 10 N, which are the 103s, which are these slightly fatter ones here. 10 N, 10 N. So I think because now we're going to move on to the electrolytics, which are these ones and these fat ones and these two uh, filmy ones here. Before we do that, I'm going to do all the soldering on here. Right, that's all those little fellas on there. Looking pretty smart, looking pretty snazzy, it's looking like a proper bit of circuit board now. Now we have the final electrolytic capacitors, I think. So there's a 4N, that's a 47 micro. That's the same. I've got a 3.3 and a 3.3 okie dokie so place only one of the 47 check on the board one of them lets you know if your oscillators do not start up what <laughs> what oh okay so anyway so as far as electrolytic capacitors go we'll get to that second bit in a second but the long leg is positive the capacitor itself will have a stripe down the side and that's the negative. So that's how you know which way around they go. Now, I'm trying to understand what this is trying to tell me. First of all, 3.3 nanofarad, long leg is positive, that goes through there. Like that, nice and easy. This one the same, long leg positive, through there nice and easy these square ones here are the four nano sevens they don't actually have an orientation so they can go in any way around like so they out they have tough little feet for when <laughs> for trying to bend them but they should be all right now it says Place only one of the 47. So these are the two 47s. Place only one of them. Check on the board. One of them lets you know that if your oscillators do not start up, you must not place it. It is best to leave this empty anyway. What, what the heck is that talking about? So we're talking about this bit over here. It says, optional. If you have an issue with VCO startup, remove. Right. <laughs> But so, but Dreadbox is saying don't stick it in, leave it out in the first place because, okay, because trying to take something out is a bit of a faff. It has to be said. So what they're saying is stick one in over here. Now with this, there's no long leg, but you've got the negative down that side, so that's got to go on the negative side. That's the positive. 
So we're sticking one in there. We're not putting one in here for reasons. And maybe someone will be able to tell us what that was all about. <laughs> Some of the point. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, we're putting these other bits in, right? That's going to be fine. And then we've got the final little bits of headers and bits and pieces to do. We're nearly there, he says, going through more and more pages and pages and pages and pages. But anyway, 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 let's get back to what we're doing. So these two here, these two square ones and that one over there. So I think if I turn this upside down, those two square ones are probably going to fall out. No, they're sticking with it. So I'm just going to get those in quick before they change their mind. Keep that leg up. So the remaining parts then. We've got a 2.2 capacitor in here. Oh yeah, remember that. So I've got this capacitor. I've got these pokey headers. And I got another one of those. <laughs> oh dear. What's this? This is another 3.3. I must have missed one. Hang on. Yeah, look, there's one there. Oh, I completely missed it. So look, long leg positive in there. That's, so there's three of those 3.3 uh, .3 nanos. That one's in there. So for this last bit, solder the 2.2. Two. So this is a 2.2. Where does that go? 2.2 2 is in there. Why that had to be separate, I'm not entirely sure. So this goes, again, long leg positive into the positive hole through there. Then we've got these transistors. We've got two transistors, which are these one, and the other one is the voltage reference TL431. is over here on this part. What you want to do is make sure that the orientation, the flat bit, matches the flat bit on the screen print. So this is going to go in this way around. Going to need to poke out that middle leg a little bit to make that fit. Wiggle that in. Good. That's the 431. The transistors, two of them over here, three 904s, which are these fellas. Again, make sure that the flat bit goes with the flat bit. Right, just those bits to put in, and then we're on to the final headers before we do all of the hardware on the front board. Heck, still got a way to go. Still got a way to go. Okay, so that's all in. So now I've got to put in these headers here because this is more likely going to sit over the top like that and have to be squished together, which is going to involve these header bits in this corner. I think the screen print's on the wrong side on this one, but we will get to that. At the moment, we're just dealing with this side. So... It suggests lying these down like so. Three headers combined to a 50 pin header. <laughs> they said, yes, we could have got a single one, but the lead time is going to be over six months. So fair enough. Fair enough. Solder these carefully so they are firm and straight. Now, this is not easy, I would say. This is not easy. However, oh, however. I would say this is normally not easy, but the way these are fitting in here, they're actually quite tight. So look, they're not going to fall out. They're not falling out. So that is remarkable. Now you don't want them to be wonky because it's going to need to match up with this on the other side. So this is relatively level. If I was to bend that capacitor up a little bit more that would be even better so you want it to feel you can rock it a little bit 
I want it to feel as though that's right, that that's flat, that that's square, and all those sorts of terms for saying that something is is straight and good. So once you're you're happy, then just just solder it. Good stuff, good stuff. And then we've got this thing, stick on the back, which is a bit annoying. <laughs> but that's where it goes, because that's where the power supply has to go. And this, ultimately, I think, is what this plugs into here to give you a power supply underneath. And this is what you would plug the Eurac power into if that's what you were just dropping it into a Eurac. So we've just got to get this round the right way. So they say putting it down like that. And then tipping it in, you can see on the screen print, there's the gap. There's the gap. So that goes there. So I'm just going to turn that over like so. I'll put this underneath just to try to level it up because I want that to be nice and flat and level so I've got the thing that's going to be going on to it not making a whole lot of sense but I know what I mean so I'm going to get in here push quite hard so that I know that's flat let's solder one see what that looks like well it's not particularly flat the main reason being that I have that this is encroaching a little bit on these other things that are soldered there so there's not a whole lot I can do about that as you can see that there's some solder there which is pushing that out a little bit but it's not so wonky that it's a disaster I don't think that's not I say I can't move those out of the way it's just the size of this so it's going to be a tiny bit wonky we'll go with it go with it try not to melt any of the other components. <laughs> I haven't any luck. I haven't any luck with my soldering today. So that I think is that entire voice board done. Just needs the chips in it. But otherwise that's good to go. And then we get on to this. Now I've got half an hour before I need to go and pick my kids up from school. How possible is this going to be? Open the bag which contains the mini jacks and solder them as shown. Mini jacks. Okay, so that's this end here. Oh wow, these are interesting mini jacks. Slightly different sockets than what I've seen before. Interesting. But they all just go along the bottom of this so it seems doesn't look like you can get it wrong just goes in like that they hold themselves in quite nicely when you're going to hold them over to solder them this is going to tip away but then these are holding themselves in quite well so that's not going to make them go all skew with they're going to be fine. So I'm going to get on with that. See you at the next bit.
I have to say, normally speaking, when I put patch sockets onto something, I get very aware and worried about whether the front panel is going to fit or not because of my wobbly soldering, my usually wobbly soldering. But because these were so... Because <laughs> these was, went down so solidly, I didn't really worry about it. And maybe I should have done. So putting the front panel on right now... Because what I would normally do is put the front panel on and sold, solder underneath with this on, holding them all in place. But as these aren't actually going to be nutted on there, I guess it's not quite so important. And it does fit. <laughs> you know, it's a little, uh, a little bit tight, but it does fit. So that's all right. But it's a consideration. Yet another consideration. Nothing else to think about when doing this. Right, what happens next? Next, soldering, did all that. Next step, most delicate in the whole build. Oh! So we will solder the push buttons. Found in bag 3.2. 3.2. Which end is one, do you think? It's probably this lot. Push buttons. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those ones. So I guess we get those out. So we've got a whacking great big, <laughs> whacking great big knob. What's that all about two regular size knobs and these two these two push buttons hmm, very nice yes so warning one make sure you do this procedure right if it goes wrong it'll be very hard to repair i find that's true of all of it but let's go with that two they have a polarity which needs to be respected respect the polarity if they're not placed correctly they will be damaged Bottom side is a plus sign. It must match the square pad on the PCB. You can also identify plus sign as on the button as it's much shorter. No. There's no shorter leg that I can see. Ah, uh, right. Okay. So we've got square, square pad there and there on the left. So they're the same orientation. All right, so it has to fit. So he said about underside there being positive. Okay, so one of these legs under here has a positive next to it. There's also two dots. I wonder if those two dots match up to the dots on there. I think they do. So this is the positive leg. I mean... Is it smaller? I don't know. That's the positive leg, that one there. So that needs to go into that square hole, in which case those two dots do follow the two dots on the PCB. Do you see that? So that's the positive one going into the square hole. So it goes like that. Okay, this one, just going to check that it's absolutely the same. There's the positive. There. So that is going to go into the square hole like that. Officially, the guide at the top should match the small hole. Okay, so there's also a tiny, a tiny little bit sticking out there, which there's also a little hole for at the top there. So I think I think we can establish that that's the right way around. So it's going to need to go all the way down so that top bit goes in its little hole, I think. Let's try the panel on it. Because what's key is that they have to poke through, otherwise you won't be able to turn it off. Because it's you know it's a push on, push off type thing. I mean that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good to me. I think the thing here is that you just kind of have to go for it. Try not to press too hard this time, because they are they are good. They look like they've all come through about the same. So I'm going to choose a leg. See whether I can nicely solder that in. Okay, so I've done a corner of each. Try with the front panel again. There, that's fine. Yeah, 
so I will solder the rest of that. I think we got through the tricky bit. I think we did. Yes. Yes, that's fine. Good. Right, moving on. Slide potentiometers. So we're not doing these knobby bits yet then. we get on with these sliders. Nice tip to do this easily is to solder the top pin from above and then flip to finish the job. Okay, we might give that a go. Make sure they're completely straight. Completely straight. Yeah, completely straight. So they've got two pins, two pins and one pin is what you've got. So they can only go one way around. They're all the same all the way across, are they? Yeah, they're all 10 KB. So they all need to be flat. Well, I'm going to take their advice and see whether I can actually solder this top pin. A little bit tricky. Access is tricky. But I guess if I put that in there, having it flat, so I add the solder. I'm just going to press it down before I release it. Try another one. <laughs> no, that one's not going so well. Okay. Good. Okay, this might might get away with it. Load a solder, hold it down, release. Now as I push down on the board of course it all wants to come up. So it's pushing on the pins on the other side so I need to push it back in maybe I should have put it up on something so that the pins are not pushing through from the other side see that would have made sense had I done that oh don't melt don't melt things be very careful not to melt things you shouldn't be melting so I think that works all right. Now it's going to be impossible to solder from the top from this side because I'll just burn big holes in the patch socket. So I have to do it upside down. So let's, are these going to help if they're one way or another? In order for stability, possibly, yes, I think that's going to help. So I've just got all these along here to do. Just a little thing that's starting to, I don't know, that's just slightly odd. Let me zoom in as much as I can. And that's how this, uh, the difference between soldering two bits here. I've got this side here, I put the solder and iron against it, present the solder, and it solders like nobody's business, like I always expect it to. This next one, I do exactly the same, same action, and it doesn't work as well. It's not gone onto the ring. It's not gone onto the pad. It's just gone onto the leg and to the soldering iron. And I have to keep adding it until it sort of globs itself onto there. It's just strange. I'll show it again. That on there. Solder, solder, no problem. That on there. just doesn't flow as well. I can't explain it. Easy as pie. Not easy. It doesn't go onto the pad, just goes onto the leg and you've got to jiggly squidget about. 
it may just be my soldering technique at this point it's really difficult to say but it, it does feel that this is making this soldering experience it's globbed again it's not it's this second leg i mean i guess perhaps it's to do with the way that heat has been pulled away on these legs I don't know, like that's just gone straight onto the iron, not onto the actual board at all. Get that in there. It doesn't go onto the pad. It's really weird. It's really weird. If I rotate it enough, it then sort of ends up in the right place. But on the left hand one, it just goes straight on. This side, not so much. I think we're going to need to stop or pause while I go and get some children because that's that's another load of time. But let's just see if this goes on. Yeah, nice. Looking really nice. Coming together, yes, most certainly. Right, I've got another half an hour. So I have until I've got to go and do the next thing. So let's see what else I could squeeze in. Open the, the last bag. So in here I've got one of these um, terrible mini adapters, a couple of knobs, power cable, oh another knob, and a whole bunch of really annoying switches. Annoying purely because they're really hard to solder in because they stick up a lot. Okay, so there's six toggle switches. Separate the on off from the on off ons. Do they look any different? Well, that's got three positions. That's got two positions. Three positions. Yeah, three of each. Solder these in place as indicated and then add the knobs. Right, so you just got to stick them in then, looks like the idea. So these are the... That's, this, is the this is the three. So threes go in... In there. Oh. On off on. And there! Lovely! How do I... How do I solder those in then? Because they feel like they're going to stay in, which is a good. So I don't want them to wobble side to side. Alright, good. Let's do a pin on things and let's see if we can get that working. On the sides. I'm not pushing down on it. That's six of them. Let's just check that they appear to be flat still. Not wobbling about the place. No, nope. let's try it with my panel on. Yeah, they're all good. All good so far. So let's do the rest of those. Good. And then add the 10k rotary pots. These are B10Ks. That's a B10K. And the rotary switch, which I bet is that big fat one. They should be firm and straight as ever. So it goes into there, pushes down. Then pushes down. They are pretty firm. They're not going anywhere. So that's good. The big one. Any particular way around it needs to go? Difficult to say. Oh look, on the screen it does have this little bit here. That seems to be at the top. There's not really anything else that will tell you anything. 
Does it go in the other way around? No, it won't actually go in the wrong way around, so it has to go in this way around. So that's useful. That is the only one that seems a little bit troublesome, in that it will come out a little bit. So I think what I will try to do for this knob is actually do it a bit from this side. So if I can heat up this lug here, that's going to stop that falling out. Good, can I do the other side while I'm here? I'm not sure about that, but never mind. Let's get those other bits put in. I definitely think I've lost some of my soldering mojo. It's really strange. Either that or the tip of my eye and is I don't know, lost it or something. But then it suddenly then all works. So I don't know what that's about. Good, let's try the front panel. Okay, everything's in. That's good. So open bag one one for all the screws and bits and pieces. The spacers. Separate them as in the photo. Be careful not to mix the 15mm plastic spacers with the 11mm ones. 15mm oh, okay. are used for standoffs. Smaller ones. One, two, three, four, five, six of those. Two, three, six of those. One, two, three, four, five, six of those. Couple of screws. And it's a good one. Right, so what we're going to do is take one of these littler ones, put it through the board, and screw it into one on the other side. That's the plan. Where did these go exactly? So there seems to be one here. You don't need any kind of tool or anything. You just stick them through. And three along the bottom. Next, get the two times bolts, two times washers, two times 10 mil metal spaces, metal spaces, and we will create the stand for the power board. Right, so this is on the other PCB. So this is the power board here. We want two bolts, two washers, so you've got these little tiny kind of Oops, spring washers. And that's going through up here. Right. Then attach the power board as shown. So power board into here. So this is going to go into our little socket. Like so, we've got the USB port coming out the side, and then <laughs> standing out a bit proud, I have to say. And then you put some screws in it. Yeah, that's it sticking out a little bit high. Oh well, these screws will fit in here. Okay, I don't want to over tighten it. Excellent, right. <laughs> Okay, they want to check the voltages. Right, so before we get any further, before we put the ICs in. Okay, well we can do that. We just need a USB cable. I must have those knocking about. Okay, so get the USB adapter, USB cable, power board. There's no risk. We can check the voltages. So presumably they mean they need to correct it, uh, connect it to power somewhere. So we're going to plug this in here. This in there. Now I've got a, a hub on my wall here which can power stuff. I'll plug that in. 
Now, there's no, no indication of anything actually occurring. There's no LEDs or anything. So we're just going to have to try to measure it, as it says. So we're looking for, what, DC voltage? DC voltage. Connect the black test lead to the ground pin and the red test lead to something else. So where is, where are these pins? What are we talking about here? Okay, there's a ground down here, so down inside here. There's a couple of test points and I think that's what they're after. So I need to put this on ground, put this on minus 12. And we get 12, something or other. Yeah, no, no, that's plus 12. <laughs> and then on the other side, ground, minus 12. Yeah, give or take. Then there's a plus 5 volts over there somewhere. So there's a 5 here. Yep, and a 5 over here, yes, it's a 2.5 volt somewhere, right over there, right down this end, 2.5, 2.5, lovely, if all the measurements are correct, get the remaining parts and put the ICs in place, they should all be in the same orientation, that makes things a little bit easier. Good. And I will stop there. I'm back. It's late at night. <laughs> just before bed, I thought I'd check in to see how far I got. And maybe, just maybe, I could sort of finish a couple of things off. So I've got my chips. I've got my um, thing. <laughs> Part of that, which is going to go together. So... Let's see. All the chips go on in the same orientation. Then we'll have to do the header. So let's put the chips in first. Now, are these all the same? What are they exactly? And where are they going to go? And does it say so on here? Kind of it does. I mean, the big one is this one, which is the... The at mega eight two uh, three two eight p. That's going to plop in there. Now for all of this, I'm going to get my super duper tool. The one useful tool I found in electronics is this one. What you do is you put your chip in it, you squeeze it, and it just straightens up those legs so it actually goes into the socket. Now let's make sure we get it the right way around because that's important. So there's pin one over there. And that appears to be upside down. <laughs> so I think it's going to go that way around. Now it says it's the same for all of them. So let me just close in and check. Yeah, that should be that way around. Yeah, upside down. So with a bit of luck, that should just press in there. Like so. Great stuff. Great stuff. Now I've got these which are different mm. so this one here is a 74 HC 165 74 HC 165 good right put that in a little squashy thing again this also goes this way around squash that in there now here I've got a 25A and an MCP4822, which is that one. Let's do that one first. Ooh, 25AA, yeah, okay. To go that way. So the writing on all of these is currently has been upside down. TL074.
they're all in. Then we need the socket header. So what they want us to do is attach it to this one and then this is going to go through the bottom of the other board. So we stick that on there. Mind your fingers because it will hurt you. It will hurt you. It goes on top and we want one of these and an M3 nut. What's that look like? Oh this. That and that. Okay. As shown. Place them as shown. You want to place it there and there. Alright. Stick it through from underneath. Alright. So this goes... I'm not sure why. I guess it gives it a little bit more ballast. Ballast. I don't know. A bit more balance maybe. I don't know. Because you've got that thing on the end there, haven't you? The USB power thing. And that's taking a little bit of a pressure where I put in that there it's going to take a little bit of that pressure off when I try to put this onto here I think now connect the two boards bolt the rest of the 15 mil spacers to the bottom of the side as shown what shown where oh okay once once it's there I guess yeah yeah okay once it's on top so this this here it's going to sit over the top beautifully <laughs> and and just kind of work. Oh, it's great. Oh, look, there it goes. So that's in. So what it wants me to do is stick all the rest of the feet, I see, underneath into the relevant bits. Because they should just screw into those things there. See, I quite like this whole not being in a case thing. You know, I don't mind that. I mean, okay, so it could be a dust magnet. That's fine. But the fact that it's, it's kind of naked and can instantly be stuck into your... Uh, that one doesn't go to anything. <laughs> uh, could go somewhere else. I think it's quite interesting. So that's no good. That's not a thing. Um, is that it? just those ones one two three yeah seems to be one over here oh yeah that's pretty solid pretty solid I think we're just going to finish this right here right now that's quite exciting turn that back on turn this back on so I've just got a solder that and then it's a good one gosh it's a good one <laughs> I've got one. I've got a thing left over. Oh, oh look, no, there's a socket here. Socket here. 4148. That's not what that is. Oh, bollocks. Oh, I blew it. I totally blew it. Okay, well, I, at least I didn't solder anything. So, let's <laughs> take all of these off. Oh, it was all too good to be true, wasn't it? All too good to be true. So I've put something in wrong. Something is not in right. No, no, that's referring to... <laughs> idiot, that's referring to the diode. 4148, the thing inside there is a 6N something, which is what this is. So I did get it right. Damn it. Damn it. So I took it apart for no reason. <sighs> well, never mind. You know, it is late after all so let's get this round the right way it's got no sticky bit out of it but it does have a does have a little mark on it so that I'm taking to be the front which is pointing down I'll stick that in there good right so back to putting this back on and screwing those legs back on and then we can get back to where we were a moment ago so now, where were we? Right back here, just a little bit of soldering. That's all we were going to do. <laughs> and then it's a good one. At least now my um, soldering iron is up to up to speed, up to temperature. Let's let's go for it. Good. 
Good, it's all coming together, it's feeling pretty synthy at the moment. So get the two pot washers, place them as shown. Right, I guess they go over the pots. Then we stick this over the top. So now it's not going down. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, yes. Now these should go on the top, but only sort of finger tight. Not anything else. Nothing for that one. Doesn't seem to be. Oh, that's a tough one. So it says don't use any kind of tools for putting these on. Just put it on tightly with your fingers. So it's not bending anything. Okay, so that's the nut. So bolts are in other places. So here. Of course, doing this is all assuming that the whole thing's going to work and I'm not going to have to take it apart in a minute. <laughs> Which is always a possibility. So this is full confidence, full faith going to complete it, including putting on the knobs. That's got to be crazy, isn't it? Are these yeah they these are the knobs that have got a, a screw that you tighten them on with so they're actually easy to get off so if this is all for nothing and a thing doesn't work or it catches fire it's not going to be difficult to unscrew them so just for the sake of completeness i'm going to put the knobs on is that all the screws there is I mean, I've got quite a few left over. Should I be using them for something, do you think? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe, I guess, for this, if I was going to put it into Euro rack, I could use it. I've got any other holes that I'm not spotting? No. So that's nicely done now. So with the knobs, I'm going to pull them all the way over to the left. Ugh! And then put these on, and I'm going to need a little screwdriver to get in there in order to do them up. So this is the decay on the amp. Put it anywhere you like, but I've put it all the way over to the left. So I'm going to assume that's going to be about there. Yeah, that's pretty good. And this one needs to point at this bottom bit in the middle somewhere I'm just going to lift it slightly off the off the face plate good enough and this one Sorted. Nice. Look at that. Look at that. Look at it. Just look at it. <laughs> oh, that's looking really nice. It's looking really nice. They do good front panels, Dreadbox. Now, I am going to just plug it in just to see if there's smoke. But I'm not going to listen to it at this point. I'm going to do that tomorrow or another day because there is a certain amount of tuning required, calibration, things like that, which are just the worst. It's it's the hardest thing of the whole lot is getting that right. So I'm going to I'm going to have a fresh day and look at it then and see if I can get all that kind of stuff to work. It, hopefully it will just be a breeze. <laughs> we will see. But in the meantime, let's plug this in and see what happens. Absolutely nothing because I don't know nothing because there's no lights. Oh, look, there's a light. There's a light. There's a light. Oh, yeah. 
there's a light. I kind of want to plug something into it now. <laughs> Don't I? Shouldn't I? Really? Let's just get a sound out. Go on, get a sound out. You can use something. Something. Okay, I've got a beat. I've got a beat. Fabulous. Well, there you go. Uh, so you put it on record, yeah? And then put it on play. No, maybe not. Oh, there we go. <laughs> well, it sounds phenomenal <laughs> already. So that was fun. Great. Well, it seems to work. I'm not getting any smoke out of anywhere. It seems to do things. Switches work. Bits and pieces work. Awesome. Right. So I'm going to put it away. Put it to one side. Now that this is fabulous and I'm fabulous and we're all fabulous. We're all feeling fabulous about our fabulous synthesizer. Put it away and I'll check on it tomorrow, I think. At some point, if I can, <laughs> to... <laughs> to go through the tuning and the testing and the calibration and see where we get to after that. So that's awesome. So pleased we got this far. And it took probably, oh, I can't remember now, four hours maybe. You know, it's a good solid afternoon's worth of soldering and fiddling about. Which is what, a, you know, it's a synthesizer. It's what it should be. It should be that. This is not just a little module that we're building, which would take an hour or two. No, this is a full analog groove synthesizer so yes okay till next time right we're back we're back it's another day a fresh day and on reflection i think what we'll do is i'll do a separate video on the testing and calibration because it's always a bit of a thing and this video of the build is already enormous and long and has tons and tons of overwhelming detail in it which is great and groovy. So if you've got this far, excellent, well done. But now you need to push off to another video where I'm just gonna focus purely on the testing, the calibration, and the joy of getting to the end of this build. So thanks for watching the construction of the Dreadbox Dismitria, and I'll see you in the testing and calibration. Now go and make some tunes. <laughs>